Okay. So um, welcome everybody. I've never really done a, a baking class. I've done some baking videos. So I'm really excited about this because it is such a short trip from being very frustrated and, and having inconsistent results in your baking to having consistent results and being really proud of it. it I mean, the step is like this big. It, it's, it's incredible to me how people think baking is this vacuous, special gift and mystical power when ultimately today we're going to find out that it comes down to the mixing methods. So, so far... I've got a cup and a half of all-purpose flour that weighed seven ounces. I am now going to do a cup of uh, cocoa, and let's see how much that weighs. I'm betting you it doesn't weigh seven ounces. One cup dark brown sugar. I love these little carafes. We used to serve iced tea in these in my catering company. I use them for grains and sugars and stuff. One, two, two thirds of a cup, weighed 4.4 .4 ounces. What's this calling for? A teaspoon. I like these cookies salty. That's another thing that I make. So this is half a tablespoon, which is two teaspoons, three teaspoons and a tablespoon. No, one and a half. So I'm going to make them salty. I like a little bit more salt in them, and you'll see why when you bake them off. Vanilla is wet. Baking soda, two teaspoons of baking soda. Crack my eggs. And you can see that they're room temperature because they that white runs really quickly. Here's another thing. We want, again, a consistent mixture. So don't, uh, in the creaming method, you should not be cracking whole eggs into the mixer bowl. What we should be doing, zero on the scale. That butter is exactly four. I bet you that one's four. Uh-oh, 7.1. <laughs> That's the butter we put on the bread. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm going to have to add 0. 0.9 from the refrigerator. It's okay. All right, here we go. All right, here's all our butter. Boink. Here's all our sugar. Doink. Here's our mixer paddle, and I want to show you what to look for. What we want is this to start looking like soft serve ice cream. As I'm getting now, it's flicking it, slapping it against the side of the bowl, and look how much creamier this looks now. This is a light, it looks almost looks like ice cream. And as soon as I feel like that's fully incorporated, I'm going to give it another drip. This is one of the points at which you're building the structure of the cookie. Don't ever just dump egg in entirely. Don't ever crack a whole egg in there either. Let's stop, scrape down. Consistent mixture, scrape the bowl. All right, still got that much egg. Drip, wait for it to be incorporated. At our vanilla. I didn't want to add it to the eggs because the acid can break the eggs. Okay, we don't want to over mix at this point. The idea with this is to wet the ingredients. Chocolate chips. I always use the Ghirardelli. They're my favorite. And white chocolate chips. You can add nuts if you want. You can add raisins, cranberries, anything you think of. They, they really don't have anything to do with the mechanical process of baking. And the last thing we're going to do now, let's start portioning out these cookies, some of which we can bake, most of which we can freeze. All right, got my portion scoop. And uh, when they all freeze individually, then I'm going to put them in a Ziploc bag. Because if I put, I... Them, in a, if I put them in a Ziploc now, they're just going to stick together. All right. Yeah, mine came out real nice, too. Look at the crackle on top where it yeah. starts to split. That's a good amount of leavener there, right? They're nice and thick and high. The chocolate chips are gooey and melted. The bottom is nice and dry like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad, Gary, that you were able to diagnose your own when you saw all that butter and stuff. Let's uh, break it open. Oh, they're still quite hot. Look at that. This is another thing, the chips in the middle, 
the chips being suspended within the cookie instead of the chips falling to the bottom. This is a good structure of a cookie.